All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. Going to be reviewing episode five of the Last of Us HBO series. So let me start off by saying best episode of the season by far. Best episode. What a way to recover after the last two episodes. This is a recovery right here. OK, because like I said, episode three, even though I didn't like the direction, I it was good for what it was. Right. But episode four was I felt like was kind of all around mid. We know episode one started off amazing. You know, the, the one for one recreation of the game. That was a very strong start to the season. Episode two. I thought that was great, too. Also, you know, I thought that was great also. Then, you know, episode three, the deviation and then four, what the, but okay, I see you. They recovered and I, and I had a feeling I'm like, this is going to be the best episode of the season to me. You, you had a lot of the critics saying, oh, episode three is the best season is the best uh, episode of the season. You know, they've seen the whole thing. So they said it, episode three was the great one. No, we, we listen, all due respect. We know what that was. Let's keep it real. We know why they said episode three was the best episode of the season. And it's not. It's this one right here. This, this is it. I feel like I lost a family member. This episode had everything. It had story, fantastic acting. It had enough action. It, ha it hit you right in the feels. It hit on every single point and dimension. Everything that it needed to touch and everything it targeted it, it landed okay it it did all of that see that that's all i was asking for that's all i was asking for when when i criticize the previous episodes and everything like that people act like you're you're asking for some some pie in the sky unreachable you know pipe dream or something like that that's not re realistic like my your like your expectations were just unfathomable or unreasonable no this episode is the perfect example of what people like me have been asking for and because it's not like this episode didn't deviate in several ways clearly it did so it's not necessarily just the deviations right you can deviate but you gotta you still gotta respect the source material in one way or another in, in the important ways right it's it's you still got to land, you, you know, the episode still has to land and this episode landed in every way. And it's like, man, like usually I take very I take very, pretty thorough notes on each episode because I like to go in detail of every little thing that happened. But I was just so immersed and so like enthralled and focused on the episode um, that I listen, I wrote down some things, but. I was focused on the episode. I was all I was all into it, man. I was just it was it was it was it was so good. It was so good. It, it was fantastic. I love it. Um I love it. Man, where do I even where do I even begin? Okay, so like I said, I'm not going to be as thorough as I've been in, in in my previous episode reviews, but okay. So this episode takes place um takes place you know a little bit before the uh the 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 last episode right so they're showing you sam and henry and what was going on with them uh prior to joel and ellie arriving uh in kansas city and being um and, and being ambushed so they're showing you where last episode they showed you joel and ellie now they were showing you sam and henry and how both of them like uh converged uh up to pretty much run into each other um, so we learned that, you know, as we know, hunters are people who rebelled against Fedra and apparently the Fedra Fedra in Kansas city were the worst, like were the worst Fedra, uh, you know, agents and officers out, out of like all the QZs, uh, apparently, um, they were like raping, torturing and murdering people that that's crazy. Right. So the people finally got tired of it. And they rebelled 
and they killed federal agents. We saw we we saw them killing you know federal officers, shooting them in the head, uh, just impaling them, stab stabbing them. We saw the burnt bodies last last episode, so they had no sympathy and empathy for uh, for Fedra at all, right? And then we learned that the people that they had captured were Fedra collaborators, Fedra sympathizers, right? Um, they would pretty much snitch and sell out uh, their their fellow their their fellow uh, people just to get something from Fedra. It could be food, medicine, whatever, right? So you sell out people um, to Fedra, whoever they're looking for, or you know you you you're pretty much their mole, their snitch. Um, you know, they're informant and then you get rewarded from Fedra. But now that the hunters have killed all the, all the Fedra agents and they're in charge, they've rounded up all these collaborators and yeah, the co collaborators are scared for their life. And, and Henry was also, um, Henry was also a collaborator. So apparently, um, Sam has leukemia. He has, he has cancer. And there was some medicine that uh, that he needed um, to get to help to get Sam to uh, that he needed to get to help Sam out, if I'm um, remembering and understanding correctly. And one of the Fedra agents uh, told him if he wanted to wanted the medicine, he had to uh, pretty much give them information on the on, on the re on the rebellion on the res on the resistance. Right. And the leaders of it, the, re the leaders of the resistance were Kathleen and her brother, Kat Kath Kathleen's brother. I think his name was Michael. He was the original leader. Right. But then he got sold out by by uh, by Henry and then federal officers killed him. And apparently that's how Kathleen became the like the de facto leader of, of the hunters now. So we were all wondering, like, how the hell did Kathleen you know, become the leader of the hunters. So apparently her brother got killed, her brother died. And so she was the one, she just inherited the position. Even, even with that fact um, of her brother being the original leader, like her inheriting it is like, eh, you know, still hard to believe. Cause the, through this whole episode, we see, we, we clearly see, yeah, she's still not a good leader. She's definitely, she's definitely not. Um, so that's the whole uh, backstory. And of course, this is not the same situation that happened in the game, like, you know, um, there was no backstory that we were told uh, with Sam and Henry, they weren't collaborators or anything like that. Uh, they were never necessarily part of, 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 of the, of the hunters, uh, of the hunters and everything like that. They were, I don't even think they were citizens of, of, well, in the game, it was Pittsburgh. They might've been citizens. No, they were citizens of, of, of Pittsburgh, right? But yeah, that whole thing about them being collaborators, of course, and being hunted, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't in the game. And in this uh and in this episode, uh another deviation is 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 Sam is deaf. And I actually actually think that's a great choice, right? That's one of the changes they made, amazing choice. Because if you ever seen um A Quiet Place, you know, the movie A Quiet Place, uh when there's so much danger and and threat and and monsters around. Uh, having someone who's who's deaf and has to rely on someone, especially his brother, just creates these these great scenes of like, uh, you know, just showing their relationship and their connection and, and their love and everything like that. Um, and even at the end of the episode, when they're just talking, talking about uh, making and directing the episode, it was Craig Mazin who came up with the idea that Sam should be deaf. And uh, Neil Druckmann said he was actually so mad he never came up with that. I actually think that's a, that's something good that should have been in the game. I actually think that's uh, so they have so they have to communicate through ASL, and it like it it shows like their connection and like it. I think it actually helps with the pacing of of the show also. So yeah, so we we see the Fedra sympathizers and the collaborators and everything like that, and um. Kathleen is asking them about, you know, where's Henry and Sam? And I think one of them gives up the doctor that Kathleen shot in the last episode. Um, he was actually helping, he was actually helping them out, uh, Sam and Henry out. He leaves because the, they're held up in some building in some attic with limited, am limited amounts of food. He goes out to find more food, but he gets captured as we learn, as we know. 
Um, so they have to they have to leave. Um, and Kathleen is very she's she's cold hearted, but she's irrational. Like I, you know, and, and at some point in this episode, they do try to like humanize her. You know, like there's always an attempt to humanize uh, everybody in the show. But we don't give a damn about Kathleen. We just don't like there's where she we, honestly like get i couldn't wait for her, her her to die i couldn't wait for her to get out of here bro like she was just a, a complete waste and served no purpose um to this show in my opinion she was really just a vehicle to deliver certain lines right but as, as far as a a leader of the hunters no i don't think she served a, a great purpose um at all i was not convinced by her i was not moved by her no uh she just didn't do it for me um so fast forward a, li a little bit sam and henry uh so they so they actually see joel um you know getting the the gunfight with the with the uh hunters from last episode because they're held up in a building and they see that's how he actually follows joel uh, they follow him into that building um, after they uh, they see him get into that gunfight because obviously they see oh he's not a hunter and of course uh, Henry has Henry has a plan to get out of Kansas uh, to get up get out of Kansas uh, Kansas City. Um, so we get to the scene that they ended off with last episode with Sam and Henry aiming the gun at Joel and Joel and and Henry. Um, excuse me, Sam and Henry aiming the gun at Joel and Ellie. Uh and Henry is they show that Henry is not a is not a violent person at all. He's very in, inexperienced um with how to even even handle that situation where he hands where he has them at gunpoint. So he's like this really innocent kid who's who's only trying to protect his brother. That's all he really cares about is just trying to protect his brother and make it make it to safety. Um he and later on in the episode he even tells Joel like uh yeah the the gun wasn't even loaded their guns aren't even loaded they don't even have well well they might have had ammo because they still they still took out their guns later on in the in the in the episode i saw ellie shoot her gun but i don't know if sam and henry ever ever actually ever shot their gun so they might not have even had had, had ammo at all um they just pretty much used it as as a prop for intimidation in case they need to and obviously you know, it worked, but they're not violent. You know, they're not violent people at all. Um, and Sam is eight in this, in this show. He was older in the game, closer to Ellie's age, like 12, I think he might've been like 12 in, in the game. So he's much younger here. Um, so we learned that Fedra apparently drove all the infected underground. They, I think they said like 10 years ago or something like that. So apparently that's why in the last episode we saw like that that uh, that floor sinking in, um, and then later in the episode when shit goes down we saw all the infected uh, like come out of the ground out of like a sinkhole, uh, because all that ground just I, I the those underground pathways just started getting uh, flooded with infected, um, full full of inf infected, and. Um, the ground just started giving giving away all those tunnels they were probably in. Um, and I think they said, they probably said 15 because we know it takes a bloater. How A bloater takes how many years to actually grow, uh, mutate into a bloater? Is it 15? Is it, it's like 15 to 20 years, right? I think it's like 15 to 20 years. So yeah, that, um, that, that makes, that makes a, a, about sense since they drove them uh, underground uh all that all that time ago um and while they're in and while they're in the tunnels uh you know uh everybody joel ellie sam and henry we get the part we get the scene from the game where uh where pretty much you you get this under you see this underground settlement of where people were hiding out and living and they create you know they they created a home for themselves uh, to just to just you know actually live their lives the best they possibly could they created like a, a daycare and and house rules and and like I remember the game there was like a like 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 uh um uh like even like a laundromat like uh, you know they they just had everything uh that they needed um 
uh, 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 in there and they just utilized everything to like create a normal situation of, of living and with their all their amenities and the accessories they had they just tried to recreate a very normal life uh in this underground um on, on this underground settlement and we see like that little uh picture ish it's ish and uh ish and danny and if you know the story of like ish and danny uh from the last of us game pretty much it just tells a story about about the people who actually used to live underground and essentially what happened to them because they had children with them and you know it it's not a good ending but you know that's what that uh that's what that was about so that's a that's one of the really um interesting and sad stories uh in the last of us game that's not told to you you have to like read the notes it's a really interesting story um so through this th while they're underground and waiting uh waiting for it to get like kind of dark uh you see you you know you kind of just see um sam and, and ellie spending time together you know talking about their comic books you know ellie you know had a comic book collection in the game and everything like that and you just get to see them be kids right you know this they they don't get to interact with a lot of a lot of other children too often um, so this was just a time for them to, you know, truly act like children um, and just laugh and, and, and enjoy themselves. This was, you know, one of the rare situations where they're not um, in danger, you know. So it's just one of those situations, you know, uh, Joel and, and Henry are just looking at them as their guardians. And, you know, it, it's just an enjoyable scene to see them, you know, just be able to be kids for a few minutes and not worry about, you know, all the threats of the world and all that stuff. Um, so they get to the other side of the, of the tunnels. Right. Um, and of course the scene in the game was, was a lot more than that. Uh, you know, there was a lot of infected un underneath there and a lot, it took longer to get, to get out. Um, and of course there was like, even, even the scene of, they, you know, it was, it was a lot of scenes taken, taken out, uh, from from the game which which is fine like i said they take out a lot of scenes from um uh take out a lot of scenes that were mainly gameplay because of course they have to get to the sewers um after getting past the, the fedra uh outpost and then they get to the highway and then they jump off the cliff and um and, and all that stuff and that's how they get to the tunnels and all and all that good stuff by the by the like the by the beach and and all that stuff but you know the 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 beach, the, the the tunnels is just right underneath uh Kansas City. So that deviated no no problem. Um so then we get to the sniper scene, the, the neighborhood sniper, right? Sniper ambush. Um and <laughs> this scene was was pretty quick. Once again, I guess you can chalk it up to uh when we played it, it was long for gameplay reasons, but you know, I can understand that, uh, or this man, Joel is playing on easy. He literally just walked into that for, for something that kind of took, probably took us maybe, um, 10, 15 minutes. This Joel, Joel did it in, in one minute in, in the show, uh, because there was other like, uh, hunters that we had to, had to kill in the game before we got to the actual sniper and avoiding the sniper fire was, uh, was also um, somewhat challenging depending on what route you took and what difficulty you were playing on. Going right was, I I feel like kind of harder. Going left was the easier route. You would you would have to have a smoke bomb to go right to cover your you know to 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 cover your your path to blind the uh, the sniper. Um, but Joel gets to the sniper, and he tries to negotiate with him because he sees he's an, he's an old man and this guy is part of the hunters. And so he already had radioed Kathleen to their, to every, to, you know, what he saw in their location and everything like that. And the guy didn't give up. So Joel shot him off screen kill. That's something that still pisses me off about this damn show is all the damn cutaways and all the, all, all the damn off screen kills. Let it happen. Why are y'all being very selective? Of, of, like, it's just dumb. Um, so, so pretty much, uh, the hunters are coming, you know, they're in there, they're in there. Uh, they come in like this, this convoy and all their vans and, 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 and shit like that. And uh, 
Joel's up in the sniper nest. Ellie, Sam, and Henry are be hiding behind a car. And so Henry wants uh, Ellie to take his brother in and just run. Um, Joel can't shoot all these dudes. There's, there's a lot of these, these damn hunters. So um, Joel can't necessarily snipe all of them. So that's, that, that's understandable. So he's not firing yet. Um, but Henry is about to give himself up. He gives himself up. And um, Kathleen has the gun pointed at him. But then in the back, a van starts to sink underground. And then it's literally like a scene out of War World War Z where these runners just come out of nowhere. Like this scene is crazy. This scene is awesome. It looks, it looks great. It looks like how the World War Z zombies were. All right. So you got Hunter, you got, you got, uh, um, the, the, all the infected, the runners, uh, some clickers. And then we finally get to see a bloater and this bloater is bro. This bloater was the undertaker. He was just grabbing people up, choke slamming them. You know, he Perry, the uh, the uh, Tommy's voice actor, uh, second in charge, takes him, literally rips his head off like nothing. It was literally the execution from the game. They took that pretty much the execution from the game. If you get caught by a bloater, the same exact thing just rips it at his head off. Oh, he's whooping ass. That bloater is out there whooping ass. I, and, and I said last week. He's since they're not going to have his ability, they're probably not going to have his ability where he throws spores. They're going to make him like a big ass linebacker. And that's exactly what he was just rumbling and, and, and knocking people out the way and man beating and just, he's just smashing people, bro. Just literally destroying people's lives and like whooping ass. It was crazy. And I'm like, yes, this, this is what I wanted to see, you know, it, it, you know, this type of action and, and the hunt, they, the hunters, they just firing and cr firing like crazy, but there's too many of them and they're too damn durable. You can't, can't take down all these runners and, and clickers and, and, and this bloater. Nah, it's, it's too much for them. They, they become overwhelmed. Um, yeah, it was just, it, that was nuts. And Joel is, is sniping. Joel is, is sniping and he's not, and he's not missing. Like this is Joel is finally landing every, like all damn near all his shots. Uh, because Ellie is trying to get to Sam and Henry who are uh, like hiding under a car. Um, so he's like covering her. Uh, he's, you know, he's shooting. He think he was shooting like, ma like all the infected. Yeah. Cause he didn't have to shoot the hunters at this point. The, everybody's worried, worried about those damn, those damn infected. Nobody's worried. He's, he don't gotta, don't gotta worry about the hunters. So yeah, Joel, Joel suddenly becomes like, you know, a, a sniper from seal team six and he's landing like every damn shot. Um, and then, yeah, this, this scene was just, uh, uh, amazing. So after, after pretty much after this, we know they escape, but I, I just want to say my appreciation for that scene. It was well choreographed, well directed. It looked visually, it looked great because some of that was definitely CGI. I think some of it was actually, uh, people, um, especially, I think the, especially specifically the scene where they're all coming out. Some of that was CGI, but some of some of that was act was practical, right? Some of that was actually people coming out of the hole. Um, so it was a mix of both. So it was just it was just really well done. Um, I think this was the most the most shit they've had going they they've had happening on screen at one point. Like back in episode two, yeah, what there yeah, there was that scene where all the infected were running in the building where Tess was at. Um, but this was the craziest scene that we've gotten so far. There was just so much um, action and so much going on. It was just, a, it was a beautiful scene. Um, and I, yeah, I just, this is the best, this is the best episode. It had, like I said, it had everything. It had everything. And then we get to the last, after they, after they escape, they're, they're in a house. And we know what's gonna go down. And and it's like, at first I was kind of hoping, like, listen, you've changed and deviated other other people's destiny and, and fate in this show. Why not, you know, why not, you know, you know, throw the brothers a bone? You know, throw the brother the brothers a bone. I'm not saying they don't gotta die, but maybe, you know, maybe make them die some other way, something less tragic. But I'm actually glad they didn't. 
because it, it it because it's so tragic and it's so poignant. So it's like, and and it, and it hits you right in the feels. So I'm actually glad they didn't change it. You know, you needed something this tragic and sad to top off the the episode. Um, you know, it was kind of poetic. So Ellie and um, Ellie and Sam are in the room. You know, they talking and everything like that. Well. Technically not talking, but, you know, they're communicating through, you know, sign, la uh, sign language. Um, that's how Sam obviously communicates. Um, and eventually, and they have a sim they have the same conversation and, and questions that, uh, that that's in the game. They included that. And Sam shows Ellie that he got, that he got bit. Didn't happen in the game, of course, right? Um, and Ellie, this is very interesting. She, you know, cuts herself because she, she shows him that she's she had, you know, she was bitten, but she's immune. And she's like pretty much saying that she can help him. She can cure him. And so she cuts herself, takes her blood and uh, puts it on his uh, on his bite. And of course, we know that wasn't going to work. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I want to say even she knew it wasn't going to work, but she was just trying to comfort him and make make him feel better. Um, but there, she she might have actually believed that it was it was possible that that it would help. She might have actually actually believed that because she is young and a little bit naive, and it's like yeah, you're you're immune, but obviously that doesn't mean that you the cure is actually in your blood. That. It's not how it necessarily works. And even if even if your blood was, you know, let's say your blood was the cure, putting it on top of a bite, like a topical cream, that isn't gonna work either, right? It would actually, you would ha actually have to, you know, get that into somebody's bloodstream as well, right? It's not gonna work like a topical cream. It's not, you know, hydro hydrocortisone or something like that, or whatever that, that shit is called that you put on rashes. Um, so next, you know, next morning, Sam has his back turned, um, Ellie approaches him and we see that he's, that he's turned. Um, and then, you know, the, 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 the struggle goes into the next room and it plays out very similar to how it, how it plays out in the game. Um. Henry tries to stop Joel from getting uh to his getting to his gun and and shooting Sam's cuz he's still in brother mode he's still trying to protect his brother but he knows he his brother is turned so he changes you know he he has, he has to he has to shoot his brother and then he's like after that he's shell shocked he can't believe he just killed his brother his that's like his only reason for living you know that's the only family he has that's his sole purpose for being in this world and then he turns the gun on himself and shoots himself and that that's traumatizing like in in the game like a lot of like i said in even in the first episode sarah dying hits harder in this show in my opinion same thing with with this death um with 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 sam and henry it, it just hits harder um because it's not video game graphics, it's live action. You know, even even with the cutaways, which once again I wish they would stop doing, just show the damn violence. Um, they actually they they did show you know uh, Henry shooting Sam. Uh, I, I feel pretty uh, pretty thoroughly. Um, they actually showed that it seemed. Well, there was like the little the camera was like off to the to the right a little bit. And you just saw his blood, but I believe you did see the. The, the bullet actually hit him in the, in the head or whatever. Uh, but Henry shooting himself in the head, that was definitely off screen. And, you know, Joel cared. Like, of course, you know, like this, this was, this is traumatizing. It's traumatizing for Ellie. Has to be traumatizing for, this is seeing, seeing a brother shoot his brother and then shoot himself in the head. Like, that's traumatizing, bro. That's, that stuff will give you PTSD if you don't already got it in this world. And we see Ellie, you know, Ellie cries. It's a very emotional and sad scene, man. It's nuts. It's crazy. 
Um, it's just, just a really good scene, man. A really good episode. Fantastic episode. Um, and then they, they bury, they bury Sam and, and Henry. Um, and you could tell Ellie is like a little distraught. She's like ready to go. She don't want to think about it. Yeah, it's tough, man. Oh, this is, this is, this is what we wanted. This type of episode. So, um, if, if the rest of the episodes can, but, but if you notice, if you notice the episodes where they deviate the least are the best episodes, you got, you kind of got to admit that you can deviate a little bit, you know, you, you could do, you could do a decent amount of a, I'm not even gonna say a little bit. You can do a decent amount of, of deep, of deviation, but not to the amount where you, to what you did with like episode uh, three and even, and even, I'm gonna even say four, you know, um, and just respect the scenes and let the scenes play out, flesh out all the scenes and don't rush them, right? I, I feel like, I felt like, you know, this, a lot of the, the stuff in this episode wasn't rushed also. So, um, yeah, just a great episode. I, I can't say that enough. And I'm hoping they, Hoping they, you know, we got four episodes left. I'm hoping they keep it like this and finish strong. So let me know what y'all think about this episode, man. If y'all enjoyed it as much as I did, I thought it was truly fantastic. Um, oh, I, f I forgot to m mention Kathleen got killed because, so we've never seen, we've never seen a child clicker in the game. And that's something I've actually always thought about. I'm like, why are these, all these clickers grown, right? And And in the game, it's probably because they, they probably didn't just they probably didn't want to make a, a a model for a child clicker i i don't i don't i guess it was just easier for them to keep it you know to a default um adult clicker um model in the game i guess or maybe they just wanted to avoid i don't i don't i really don't know because if you're going to have people children die in the game i don't know why you can't have a child a child clicker and and Kathleen you know uh poetically gets killed by a uh a, a child clicker um i think they need to add i think they need to add some some, some well yeah i guess maybe they didn't they didn't want you killing children in the game that might be it may because it may have been like yeah we may show you children getting killed in the game but we don't want you killing children even if they're infected children that 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 might be it um, but I think they need to add that to the game. You know, you got us killing dogs and, and everybody else and, and animals and everybody else and all that stuff, uh, which which a lot of people were didn't want to do in The Last of Us Part Two. There, there are a good amount of people who are like anti uh, or who are against killing dogs in video games. I shoot them canines. I don't discriminate. OK, I'm sorry. I don't. They're pixels at the end of the day. Who cares? Um, but, yeah, I found it really interesting that. <laughs> This is the first child clicker that we've ever we've ever seen in in, in the show so far, and and obviously in in the game, and conveniently, uh, it kills um kills Kathleen, you know, cool though, um, so I think that's everything. I think I uh, touched on everything. Like I said, I didn't take as thorough notes as uh, I I usually do, because I was just completely immersed and enamored. Uh, in the moment in the in the episode but uh like i said hope they can keep it up we got four episodes left hope they can keep it up all right let me know what y'all think hit the like button hit the notification bell follow me on uh follow me on twitter and uh i'll catch y'all next time i'm out of here peace